Today's lesson, section 9.1c, we're talking about vectors in two dimensions. Uh, so example 10 is a woman launches a boat from one shore of a straight river and wants to land at the point directly opposite of the other shore. If the speed of the boat is 16 miles per hour and the river is flowing east at the rate of 8 miles per hour, what direction should she head the boat in order to arrive at the desired landing point? Okay, so let's kind of draw a picture to describe what we're talking about here. So we got a straight river, okay, water's flowing due east, okay, you have a boat from one point. Sorry, my boat's awful. Okay, now you want to head straight across and get to this point on the completely opposite side of the river, but you want to be able to land there because of the waters heading a certain way. So, what angle do you have to use? So, if we're going this, going to the right, you kind of want to face your boat into the current somehow, right? To be able to go completely straight across because the water is going to push you in a current this way so that you can kind of get to that same point over there okay so we want to figure that out so we want to kind of put together our um, um, our vectors first so let's look at the vector for the velocity of the river because it's kind of the easiest one so for the river that vector is not going um, up and down, so it has no y value um, associated with it, right? Um, so it'd be a zero, or sorry, it'd be a zero j, but it is going eight miles per hour to the right, so it does have a vector or a movement from for your i component, so eight i would be our case. Now we can just write this as eight i and drop the oj if we'd like, okay? Now the other one, the vector for the boat, we don't really have enough information quite yet because we don't really have that angle, but that's what we want to find. So let's set up what we know. And so then if I'm going to um, uh, go, my boat goes at a rate of 16 miles per hour, right? So that's its um, magnitude of its vector. So we can write that as 16. But then we don't know our theta, but we can write cosine theta for i plus 16 sine theta for j. Okay. Now, usually when we're looking at true vector, or true velocity, okay, we add the two together to get um, the true velocity. So I want to take r's vector and add it to v's vector. So 8i plus 16 cosine theta plus 16 sine theta j, okay? And that gets me that. Now, I kind of want to combine my stuff so it's all in the same spot. So my i's, um, oops, I forgot my i there. Oop. Looks like I wrote two j's change that so two eyes there you go so let's write this as one like component part so we're gonna have like I on the outside okay so 8 plus 16 cosine theta okay for I now this is one nice thing that we do know so in order for your boat to go straight across, directly across, okay, its vector needs to be a straight vertical line, right? From the point, because they're going straight across. So there's no movement for your x value at all. Okay, so there's no movement left or right. There is movement up, so we don't really know what our y value will be because we don't know how far the 
the river is or anything. But since we know that the x value can't be any movement, we know it's zero. Okay, so since we know that it's zero, that must be equal to zero. So zero is equal to eight plus 16 times cosine theta. And now I have an equation that I can actually solve to help me find theta. So I want to subtract 8, subtract 8. And then I want to be able to divide by 16. And negative 8 over 16 reduces to negative 1 half. So now, I have a ratio that's on my unit circle, which is nice, negative one half. So where is negative one half? Well, if I am looking at a negative ratio for cosine, I'm looking in the the second quadrant and in the third quadrant. Now, where does it give you negative one half in those quadrants for cosine? So your x value, that would be pi over three, and then it would also be um, four or sorry, two pi over three. My bad, not pi over three. Two pi over three and four pi over three. Okay. Now, looking at my picture, if we broke this up into a x y coordinate plane, it looks like my arrow, my vector, I would have to be going into the second quadrant to make this work. If I was going, let me use a different color so you can see. If I was going down into the third quadrant. I'd be kind of going into the shore, even though the water is like it would be a correct angle for the ratio. So it doesn't really make sense. So it only makes sense for the 2 pi over 3. So we kind of found our angle. Okay, so you can say 120 degrees if you'd like, or you can say 2 pi over 3 for the angle measurement. But they say. Um, they want to know what direction. So that means that it's kind of talking about your bearing. So since you're going you're going up north and you're going to the west to get there, you would say north. And since this part is 90 degrees, take 90 degrees off of it, okay? That can that's going to give you 30 degrees. Okay? So I'm going north 30 degrees west. So that would be my direction for it. My angle measurement is 120, but my direction is north 30 degrees west. Okay. Now this next part, let's talk a little bit about force. So force is a vector that is describing the push or pull of an object in pounds or newtons. Two different ways of describing it, or measuring it. Now a result, a resultant force is several forces acting on an object which creates a vector from the sum of all the forces. Okay, So it's kind of like if I took a point and then this is my object and then there's a force pulling it this way and then there's another force pulling it that way. Depending on how strong the forces are determines which way the point will actually go. So, example 11 says two forces, F1 and F2, with magnitudes 6 and 24 pounds, act on a point or an object at point P, as shown in the following figure. So I drew a picture down there for us. Okay, Find the resultant force acting at P as a vector expressed in terms of A, or I, and J. And we want to round those values to the nearest integer. Okay. Now, looking at point P, I have those two forces. Okay, we said that um, force um, one, or vector force one's magnitude is six, because I say respectfully, so in order. And then force two is 24. Okay, now I know they're not like the rays are not proportional to what I described, but it's just a scale drawing to help us kind of figure this out. So we'll just go with it a little bit. Okay, so we have. Now, the force, now, they're all being determined by, like, from, from due east, so that's where you're getting your angles measures. Um, 
we don't really care where point P is to begin with, so don't worry about it. It looks like on my graph that's at 4, 2, but it's like it could be anywhere. I just drew it at a certain spot so I can draw the picture, okay? So since I'm given theta for both of these, now I can actually describe what I want. So for force 1, it's um, magnitude of 6 times cosine of 45 degrees for I plus 6 sine of 45 degrees for J. And then for force 2, it's 24 cosine of 120 degrees I plus 24 sine of 120 degrees J. Now I want to be able to find those a little bit. Let's simplify. So for force 1, cosine of 45 is square root of 2 over 2. And sine for 45 is also square root of 2 over 2. So if I simplify these, I would get rid of the denominator. So I get 3 square root of 2 i plus 3 square root of 2 j. So that would be my f vector. f sub 2 is force. You're going to have 24 cosine of 120 would be um, our negative one half that we talked about in the last example. And that's with i plus 24 times <clears throat> sine of 120, which will be the square root of 3 over 2. That's positive, so it's in the second. Okay, so now I can reduce the 2's, make them 12. So the first one will be negative 12, i, plus 12, square root of 3, j. Okay, so now I want to add those two, because that's what it said in the previous part, is the sum of all the forces that are acting on an object. So if I add here, let's add straight down. Now some of them are not like terms, but let's combine them into their areas. So like you'd have negative 12 plus 3 square root of 2, and those are from my eyes, plus uh, 3 square root of 2 plus 12 square root of 3, j. Okay. So this is the vector for f sub 2 and f sub 1, okay, added together. Now they want me to find the nearest integer, so that means I need to plug these into my calculator. So negative 12 plus 3 square root of 2 is going to be negative 7.75. So since it's negative 7.7, let's say 6 actually, that'll be like negative 8. And then for 3 square root of 2 plus 12 square root of 3, that gives me 25.03, it looks like. So it just rounds down to 25 as a whole. So then that would be my um, vector in ij form. Okay? Have fun.